Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Now entering the game as the 24th manager of your New York Mets, number 11, Buck Showalter. Wow. It's pretty cool. Like that? Well, right now you clap. We'll see if there's some booze along the way. Bring it on. There will be plenty of claps. Congratulations, Angela. Congratulations, Buck. Thank you. Thank you. It's been so, a fun day. I, I, I know it's it's a long road ahead, but I wonder if you could tell us what specifically about the New York Mets made this job attractive to you. Wow. Uh, I got a little, I got a little uh, cheat sheet, uh, New York fans. There's no, you know, it, I got to tell you, in some ways, it really helps managing a team to have them because they hold the players so accountable. There's a lot of things that don't get to my plate. I go, don't worry about that. Let's go out on the field. They'll take care of it. But that's like I said years ago, David Cohn taught me a good lesson. They, the, they were on him because he had had some tough outings, and he just said, hey, they asked him about booing him, and, and he said, listen, they're waiting to embrace me. It's up to me to give them something to embrace me about. And they're very, you know, they want the Mets to be good. You know, right. They want you to be good. They want you to play well. They want to, to win the game. So what attracted me to it? Probably the passion and energy of the fans and knowing that there's an accountability there that, that really makes all of our engines tick if you're really competitive. I know that after Billy Epler was hired, I saw you say the importance of the fan base. And it, it has to be, you know, when you're part of a, a baseball organization, it has to course through your veins. It's sort of always in the back of your mind, the fans. And so I wonder if the same holds true for you. How much do you think about the fans when you are charged with winning games, maintaining, you know, morale, being in the dugout? Where, where does that factor? Well, it, it can't overwhelm you, but it's something, the accountability and the responsibility of it. You know, the, the team close by over there doesn't have a corner on it, okay? We're not taking a back seat to anybody. And, you know, there's a certain respect you have to earn, but, you know, it's uh, – it's like I've said before, you know, we're going to be playing games on the West Coast. And I'm going to tell the guys. And somebody's going to be staying up to 1 o'clock in the morning, living and dying with every pitch you throw. And if you got a problem with that responsibility, that accountability, you're probably going to need to find someplace else to play. But it's a, it's a great thing when it comes together. It's special. You know, the sound of that ballpark when uh, there's competitive baseball and playoff baseball being played, you know, it doesn't take a backseat to anybody. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I know that you are a student of the game. You study it. You study the analytics, the statistics. How, as a manager, do you show a player how to be better without just saying, this is what you did wrong? That's a great question. That's a great question. Just And without just saying, here's the analytics. Hey, this shows that if you throw this pitch more, you're going to be effective. Well, how do I throw that pitch more and stay healthy? You know, all these things are fine, but if they don't stay healthy, you know, that, that it doesn't matter. You know, this guy's a great player, but he's only going to play 70 games a year. Well, mm. he's not a great player. You know, how do we keep, keep him there? But, you know, I think a pureness of heart, you know, when players, like I've said many times, they sniff out phoniness, you know, they, if you've got a pure heart and you, they know that there's just, I'm just trying to make you better so that we can win more games. Mm -hmm. And also you can have a great career and let's face it, have a good contract. You know, everybody wins, everybody wins. Yeah. So, you know, Okay, tell me what you don't like about this. You, know, you got a stake in it's your career. Okay, is this fit? How's this? How's this feel? What do you think? It's a better way to do it. What's worked for you in the past? I tell the guys all the time when you're going through a good streak, write it down. What you not what you're doing physically. What are you feeling? What are you feeling inside? You know, how does it? How does the on deck circle feel? How does a, between at bats? How does your defensive part? You know, talk about the things you're feeling when things are going well and try to duplicate them. It's not always about changing your batting stance or the bat you're using or a grip or whatever. Sometimes it's just getting back to the emotional mental side of it. And I wonder how does the emotional mental side figure for you when you see your players getting into the batter's box and you know oh. that they've had maybe a stretch of greatness or a stretch of eh. Oh, you live through them. Okay. There's days when I, I you know, it, it'll almost tear me up when something you've been work, working on, something that you've been trying to get to the end game, then all of a sudden it comes to fruition on the field and he gets a return for it. And nobody knows. I mean, the thing people say, what do you miss? I miss catching eyes with a guy when something like that's happened and he knows and you know that, and you just kind of just give each other a nod and you move on. It's not some emotional outpouring. And you don't say, wow, I hope he goes tell everybody what we did. I don't want anybody – I want to – you know, 
it ought to be on them. And that's what's left in your life to be impactful to people and try to give them some shortcuts. And so they don't step on their tail like we did. You know, Hey, Hey guys, I did that. Don't do that. Because when I did it, it didn't work too good. And it's mostly about treating people like you'd like to be treated. That golden rule works pretty good. It sure does. Angela, where were you two when he got the call? And what was your reaction? Uh, the initial call, or, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. We've done this, you know, several times. You know, you, you try to keep yourself grounded. Uh, we do have four grandsons that pretty much do really keep us grounded. So uh, at the initial when he was in, here in Dallas, um, and then we were already traveling to Maryland to, for our son's Nathan's 30th birthday. So we kind of, it was kind of, you know, a whirlwind, but, um, you know, I, I know how much he loves it and, you know, you know, I want it for him if he, you know, and we, we talked about it. Cause like I said, it was, it's, it's been a great cut last couple of three years, um, getting all these grandsons. Um, so, you know, we just stay focused and I, you know, Tried to just be as supportive and, and be there when he needed it. But he, he can do well without me, too. <laughs> I think you're both probably better together. Well, you know, I, we, the, the joke is we've been married so long, but really with baseball, it's only half the time because you travel so much. So we really haven't been married 38 years yet, okay. I don't think. So actually, 19. <laughs> that is funny. I never heard you say that before. That's great. <laughs> so this is the 20th anniversary. What is 20? What is 20? Is that... No. It's diamonds. Every year is always no, 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 38. We've been married 38. Every year is diamonds. Thank you. Thank you so much for spending time with us. I really look forward to seeing you at the ballpark and you have an open invitation to the PA booth whenever you'd like. Bring your grandchildren. Hey, be careful what you ask for. Be careful. I keep waiting. Oh. I'm waiting for Steve to come. I'm waiting for Alex to come. I'm waiting for Billy to come. I'm, Mr. Mech comes up all the time. I'll fake a pie. Yes. Next objection. Now, I won't be throwing out any games. You call down and say, hey, he, remind him that he promised if he ever got thrown out of a game, he'd come up here. Can you imagine that, that going on? I'd probably get in a lot of trouble for that, wouldn't I? Thank you so much.